Oh man, we are going live. We are back for Sunday Sickos after a week off. It's Easter. We are one month away from the NFL draft. We are ready to start getting into these, starting to fill out our portfolio to get ourselves calloused and ready for Best Ball Mania and the other tournaments. Let's do it. So you might be asking, was that my best intro ever? And the answer is no, it was not my best intro ever. <laughs> um, we are we are tired. We stayed up late last night. We are ready to do a draft, though. And as I get this all set up and running, I've actually been doing some of the dance drafts for the NBA playoffs, which has been a lot of fun. So I don't know if anyone else is doing those, but I'm, I have a real strict regimen on the way I'm doing that. I'm going to have probably less than 10 teams going into that particular tournament. But for today, we are here to draft the big board. So let's go ahead. Let's just jump right in. Let's get into this so that everyone can do their things as we wait for it to fill. We will readjust our settings so that everyone can see a bit better. But I hope everyone's having a great Easter Sunday. I am. I have. Uh, I have some family stuff planned. I have some cleaning planned. I started working on my kitchen, just cleaning it up quite a bit the other day, and I uh, want to finish that. So, as I play around with the different prompts, because I forget how I like to do this. I thought I had a particular layout for this, and I can't find it. But that's okay. We will find it as we wait. We need four more people to get into this draft. So let's do, let's get into this draft. Let's draft some teams. Anyone else doing the NBA stuff? Good morning, Liam. The Easter Bunny. So the funny thing, Liam, is the Easter Bunny is always at my house. We got Flatulin in here, Matt Woods here. Good morning. This thumb's going to haunt your dreams. I, I specifically asked for a haunting thumb for this one, to be fair. So you can blame me for that. Did my stuff just get all messed up? Do we not have the layout that I normally like here? I don't like it. I don't like, I don't like what's going on here. Let me see if I can create a whole new layout here for us. Um, I went with the fun background because it's Easter colors. I haven't finished working on this one. It doesn't have the sicko logos on it quite yet. I'm going to move myself over here. And this is what we're going to deal with. I hope you guys are fine with this because this is what I want. And we get the 102. Right away, jumping in at the 102. Let's see who's in here with us. I don't know everybody's. Is John Daigle in a draft with us right now? Is that a thing? You got Vaporware in here. Notice that name. So, got Felix in here. Al's in here. Vaporware. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Ah, there's Mr. John Daigle hopping into the, the best ball streets on an Easter Sunday morning. And what can we do to shake things up? Do we want to go? So I have a hard fade right now on the top three guys, which is probably the worst decision of all time. But we are fading for this particular tournament right now. We are fading CMC, CD Lamb, Tyree Kill. Usually I would have my exposures up on screen, but I was doing some stuff with my desktop to, to um, clean it up a bit because of all the video editing I do. So I need to re-download a lot of my programs, and that includes the Spike Week tool. See Christian McCaffrey go. I think I've been pulling Bijan up here enough. I think I want to get Jamar Chase here and play it that way. So we're going to grab Jamar Chase right at the 102. Jonathan's in here. What's going on, man? Happy Easter. Happy Easter. 
Daigle, I actually meant to go to your page because I, I think I saw you were racing again or doing a run. So kudos to that. I do not do any running. As always, we have our Mary Lou's coffee for a Sunday morning draft. Um, and I am heading to New York City this week for work. So if anyone has any food recommendations. Yeah, I haven't. I saw this Rasheed Rice thing. Al brings up Rasheed Rice situation as attack concerning real life and fantasy wise. Yeah, I I've only seen the Schefter update from like an hour or so ago. I haven't looked and seen if there's been an update on it since then. But that he was wanted in connection with a serious accident. That's not good. That's uh, that's not something we like to see. For sure. I mean, first and foremost, because of, you know, the implications of what could have happened to somebody in a, in a serious crash. But yeah, in terms of fantasy, not good either, right? Good morning, Gabe Davis. Glad to see you on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where he falls in this draft, Nick. Daigle Rennes first, 50K of the season. Oh, ran the last 18 miles with a left blister, with a blister in your left foot, but based under 11 mile. That's pretty good, man. I cannot run anymore. I need to start running again. I've started, I've actually started prepping meals again somewhat. I'm baby stepping it, but started making myself salads again, especially with how much I'm traveling for work and everything. So I'm starting by getting healthy food habits right now and something i did because i just got back from last weekend we didn't do a show because i was in washington state montana and idaho i actually went to this like upscale hotel and did my first ever like legitimate spa full body massage and i know that sounds ridiculous maybe because i'm old and i haven't gotten one or because you just think body massages are stupid but my shoulders and my knees in particular feel better than they felt in years just by doing that so it makes me actually want to be more active again just after getting that so was it expensive yes but it uh makes me it makes me feel better so like i i think it's gonna lead me to do more running and stuff of that sort so we're on the clock here we've already gone with jamar chase we see people like Devonte adams dj moore rishi rice as we were talking about on board debo and chris olave i'm gonna go dj moore i really like the way the chicago bears offense is setting up i think dj moore is just a monster in best ball as we all know and we're getting him at the end of the second round here. I'll take it. Allows us for some later stack setups as well if we wanted to. We see Debo go off the board here to Pac Fan. And I'm pretty happy with everyone that's left on, on the board for us. Someone I want to get more of. I really like Alave at this spot. But someone I've been trying to get a little more of in this tournament that I wasn't grabbing enough of early was definitely Malik Neighbors. So I think I want to grab Neighbors here, even though like I like Evans and I did like Rasheed Rice a little bit better. But I, I want more Malik Neighbors, so I'm going to make sure I grab him. Is there a giveaway today? We haven't done any giveaways on Sundays yet. Um, I don't know what I want to do for giveaways going forward. I was giving away like helmets and stuff last year, but that was on my own dime and those are quite expensive so i don't know maybe we'll do a giveaway maybe i'll do a helmet giveaway at some point but stay tuned be sure to check the, the discord and uh probably be doing stuff like that a little bit more towards the kickoff of the season i'll even talk to eric and see if i can give away like a month trial of the spike week tools here and there so be looking for that And we have no music going. What are we doing? I mean, Jesus didn't come out of that, that cave so that we couldn't play 
some music. So let's get that going. Brown, Saquon, and Jalen Hurts. It's a lot of capital to invest in one team early in the draft. And I'm not saying I hate it. I just don't think it's something I'll be doing this year. Personally, and ADP might change as well. What does Bime for owe me, by the way? Because he was saying that Saquon's average ADP was going to be 27 or worse. We've already seen him rocket up to the second round. Does that just mean I'm the smartest man at Spike Week? Probably. Oh, Eric was going away some entries on drafters or underduck. Yeah, I'll talk to him. I'll see what we can do here and there. I wasn't here for the past week or so, so... Oh, and I was violently sick. So that's why I missed a lot of the shows this week. It was a hell of a trip back from Washington. Thank, shout out to Alaska Airlines for making sure I got stranded at the Seattle airport for six to seven hours while being sick with food poisoning. So stuff that I would probably wish on my enemies, to be honest. Never got that saying. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemies. I wish I would wish a lot of things on my worst enemies. Get fucked, right? Stefan is saying they need to start getting more Mike Evans in the beginning of the third. Could easily have the Tank Dell season. I think Tank is going to have considering he's done like every year of his life. I agree. I like the Evans thing. I think the Bucks are sneaky. I know Evans is expensive, but I, I think the Bucks are a sneaky, like fun secondary stack to have, especially if you're trying to kick the can at quarterback for that second one, or maybe even a three quarterback build. The Bucks, I think, are a little underrated at this point in time. So, have I gotten it a lot? No, but uh, it's not a situation that I hate. All right, we see Rashad White go. Um. We're sitting on three wide receivers. I think this is sort of the perfect time to grab Lamar. And this allows us to set up some stuff with Lamar here, where we just have Pac Fan behind us who grabs Zay Flowers, which is perfectly okay. As we wait for Pac Fan to make his second pick, he grabs Pacheco. And so we'll grab Mark Andrews. We'll set up this Baltimore onesie elite stack to give us Lamar Jackson, Jamar Chase, DJ Moore, Malik Neighbors, and Mark Andrews currently. Fun little start. Clearly going zero RB on this one. Fantasy Dog is saying that John Daigle rocks. I concur. John Daigle, one of my favorite people to do shows with in the entire industry. And shout out to getting the gig at ETR. We're glad to see you somewhere this year. And I'm hoping we're doing movie reviews again coming up. I just watched Roadhouse last night. Speaking of doing mo movie reviews, I was inspired by Dean. If you guys listen or watch the Pick 6 show during the season, you know that John Daigle, Dean, Lord Reeb started doing movie reviews. And I sort of bullied my way onto that show. I'll be honest. I was bullying my way onto the show, in fairness, for one review. Uh, because they were really messing up and not doing a Friday the 13th review when there was a Friday the 13th in October or something like that, and I was upset. So I bullied my way on, and then I just kind of stuck around for the rest of the season. Anyways, watched the new Roadhouse last night, and uh, I didn't hate it. If you're into, if you grew up watching the 80s and 90s action movies, I think it's fine. I don't think you can go into it comparing it to 
the original Roadhouse. I think that's always a problem when you try to do that with like remakes or reimaginings. But I think it, it gives you that 80s, 90s action movie formula. And Conor McGregor was such a great, like, not a great actor, but a great hammed up villain that he was just fun. It was just, it was just a fun movie, I thought. You don't have to think too much into it. We're not reinventing the wheel with it or anything like that. Still prefer the original Roadhouse to it, but thought it was worth watching. And that was my exact point. Daigle says they did not replicate the infamous throat scene at the end, which is unfortunate. And my I threw a review up on Twitter and I just said needs more throat ripping. That is that's the one uh, problem with the whole thing. Good, good morning, Huger. I think I was saying this earlier, but I have, I actually have a pet rabbit, pet bunny. He's very small. Um, so I have uh, the Easter bunny in my house all year, every year. Daigle was not scared of grabbing Rishi Rice. He grabs him in the third round here and stacks up the Chiefs with Travis Kelsey and Mahomes and Hollywood Brown. Going for that super chief stack. Nice job, Daigle. I like it. I'm I'm not gonna hate. No hate on my account. I see you grabbed a chain, a chain, a chain. Amazing chain in the second round. Which is gonna be a fun discourse to have this year, especially after the re-signing of Raheem Mostert. So I don't think it's going to scare people off, but I don't think it's, I don't think a chance a guy that I'm going to be going super overweight on back on the clock here and we can get end the fifth round. Ugh, I do like D hop. Um, I do like D hop in this range. I'm going to grab Hopkins and I kind of coin, this is when I would like to have my spike week tool back up. Because I've been sort of coin flipping between Ramondre and Tony Pollard on teams. But let's grab Ramondre on this one. I've been doing, I think, a little bit more Pollard. Let's get Ramondre as our RB1 here. If you're fading high-priced guys at RB, do you find yourself drafting their handcuff more often? Um, so what I would say to this is handcuffs aren't what handcuffs used to be. And we have to look at it from the aspect of, is there a true handcuff for this guy, which just doesn't exist in the traditional sense anymore? Or is it a committee back with 40 to 50%, you know, 30 to 50% touch upside. So a guy like Ty J Spears is the quote unquote handcuff for Tony Pollard, but I still think he's going to get a decent amount of work. So I think you have to look at it from that aspect. If you're asking about guys like Christian McCaffrey, right? Like that's your workhorse. So I would be grabbing Elijah Mitchell at a decent clip, like definitely trying to get him at eight to 10%. My portfolio doesn't show that at the moment, but if you're going to fade a Christian McCaffrey, it's because you want to take a bet on guys like that. Um, but like even a guy like Jameer Gibbs, right? You're drafting him in the first round and he's not a traditional bell cow back by any means. So, I would say, like, to answer your question, yes, but I think that question is actually evolving. And I think it's been, I mean, I think we've all talked about it for the past few years. It's been evolving already, but the way we draft is evolving tremendously. I think this year it's been underreported how much so the drafts are evolving. And that's why getting seasonal data and putting it in over a 10-year span is going to be 
I don't want to say meaningless, but it's not going to be advantageous in the way that I think some people think it will be. The way we drafted, th just think about the way we drafted 10 years ago, right? Think about 2014 and what was the ADP in 2014 compared to what it is today. Alice saying that Daigle is cooking in this draft. I agree. I enjoyed the Chief Super Stack that he's got going on. I mean, I'm going to draft Rice until we hear more. It just... You hear all these rumblings all the time. We don't exactly know what it is. So until we... Until we know, I'll take that chance. All right, let's get through our next few picks and then we will break down what we have for a team at the moment. Did you find the timeline weird in Roadhouse time and the storyline seemed to advance very quickly? Um... I actually thought that I didn't find the timeline super weird because you, it's supposed to be quick. If you listen to the beginning, he's only supposed to be there for a month. So like, that's fine. I thought some of the characters were underdeveloped and I think some of the secondary char characters could have been flushed out a little bit better than what they were. We're back on the clock and then we can talk more Roadhouse or whatever we want to talk about here. It's Sunday mornings. Um, where do we want to go here? Let's grab Javante. I still like Javante Williams a bit here, especially on these zero RB teams. I think this is going to allow us to get Pac Flan. Pac Fan is grabbing his first guy quick and then slow roll on that second one. I respect it. I think I want to grab Xavier Worry Worthy here. I think this is just how I want to build out my wide receivers. So. Having Jamar Chase, DJ Moore, DeAndre Hopkins, grabbing Malik Neighbors and Xavier Worthy feels like a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so I think in terms of Roadhouse, they could have definitely developed their characters a bit better. I know we got the hammy villains, which were fine. I don't think you need to develop them much more, but some of the people from the bar would have been developed better. And to be fair, the original Roadhouse had the same problem. You essentially, if you go back and watch that movie, I haven't watched it in probably 10 years, but what I remember is Keith David being in that movie and they cut out entire subplots with Keith David, which feels criminal, to be honest. Keith David is amazing. If you are if you want an 80s movie, um, go watch either they live with roddy piper and keith david that movie is a ton of fun but the the quintessential keith david movie is the thing it might be the best horror movie of all time um just an um, incredible movie i had to watch it a couple months ago and still holds up tremendously what number big board is this for you i think this is early 20s if I recall, I'm not looking to max this tournament. I use the big board. The big board for me is to start to get my calluses for drafting. I don't look at this as a tournament that I'm trying to max this year. I mean, maybe in future years, we'll see. Um, time commitment, understanding what I'm going to be doing for time commitment in the summer really weighs heavily as well where i'm not just drafting on underdog i'll be drafting on drafters and DraftKings as well 
So time commitment right now, I like to limit a little bit while still staying up to date on what I want to do. Build teams that I'm uncomfortable with. I built a three quarterback team the other day that I just, it's not what I feel good about doing, but I forced myself into these builds to keep an open mind. And like I said, to be ready, 150 seems like a big number, but that's all the chances you get in the big tournaments. So, um, not that I won't be jumping in some of the other tournaments as well. I plan to do a Mastiff again this year. That's got a big asterisk on it. I want to see what the formatting is for that tournament. Because I think they're going to end up changing it a bit. Some people weren't happy with the way it was last year. I liked it personally. But, you know, everybody has different opinions. I liked how flat it was. I liked the ability to advance through a bit easier and a thousand dollar buy-in but if they make it four i'll probably still do it four out of 12 to advance instead of six out of 12. i'll still probably hop in that good morning omega and yeah so if you have any bronx recommendations i'll be in the bronx working this week Definitely be getting pizza while I'm in New York City, but always open to suggestions. If you go to the Discord, the food channel is always hopping. Always get good suggestions in the food channel there. I've gotten some really good meals. There's one thing one thing I would not have tried without the Spike Week Discord is when I went to Indianapolis, I would have never tried the shrimp cocktail from St. Elmo's. And I tried that and because I'm like shrimp in Indianapolis. But yes, it was phenomenal. Phenomenal stuff. Okay, we have a 1251 build at the moment. We are on the clock now. Um, Chase Brown just feels like he fits this team perfectly. I think we're going to grab Chase Brown to go as a third RB here. And we're going to scroll a bit just to see what's on the board. In the 11th round here. We see Herbert go here at the 10-11 swing. And God, I do like Gabe Davis here. But I think what we're going to do is I think we're going to grab Troy Franklin. Well, we can. I think I have so much of them already, but let's go ahead and grab Troy Franklin in the 11th here. Pull the board. Let's let's run down our team real quick. At quarterback, we have Lamar Jackson. Running back is Ramondre Stevenson, Javante Williams, Chase Brown. Wide receiver, Jamar Chase, DJ Moore, Malik Neighbors, D-Hop, Xavier Worthy, Troy Franklin, and Mark Andrews. Hoosier is from the area of St. Elmo's. Yeah, I, I only got the shrimp cocktail. That's not true. I got something else. But what I remember is the shrimp cocktail. Really good. Yeah, we're hitting the AFC North. Um, some by design, some not by design. But we'll take, uh, we'll take some divisional stacking here. A little bit more important in this tournament than other tournaments. But I still like to do it when I can. Man, my travel schedule has been bonkers lately. Um, the last four months and going forward. What did I think of the cocktail sauce? I actually loved it. So my favorite part. So if you guys are unfamiliar, because I was unfamiliar with the cocktail sauce from St. Elmo's. It is a, a very spicy cocktail sauce. But what I really liked about it was it wasn't traditional spicy in the sense that like you ate it and then your mouth's just on fire after you basically swallowed your your bite that spice was like gone almost instantaneously and you just kind of had like this taste after it's so good it, it was so good daigle is letting us know that they grind their horseradish fresh every morning for it 
Yeah, it does clear out your senses, but it doesn't linger. Does not linger. And that that was key for me. Because like I like spicy, but I just don't like sitting there with it like lingering for I don't like anything that lingers for the most part. And this is like 800 steps down, but it's my reasoning for not like I, I'm trying not to eat fast food anymore to begin with or limit it as much as possible. But my biggest problem with Burger King is if you eat Burger King, like I don't know what it is about their food. That taste lingers for hours after the fact and I'm just like, ugh. so I really enjoyed the St. Elmo's. Um cocktail sauce but yeah lots of traveling coming up i'm doing lots of different new york things this week i think i'm working in new york city for the next three weeks i will be in hinsdale new york which is completely separate this is for ghost work april 20th or 21st so we won't have a show that week on sunday morning because i have to go sleep in an extremely haunted house so I'm actually looking forward to that. It's a house I've wanted to do for a while, but that's over by Buffalo. And um, yeah, that that's what I'm looking for. And Hoosier brings up a good point. You can get the cocktail sauce at a few different restaurants throughout town, specifically the airport. So if you go to Indianapolis, you can get it in the airport. But yeah, lots of traveling. Next month, I will be in Pennsylvania for a weekend doing a convention. So if you're in the Pennsylvania area, I'll be at Pennhurst Asylum for two days. Uh, and then I think I got more. I don't know. I got New Orleans in September. Just constant, constant travel. But all good. All good stuff. Like I said, I did Washington, Idaho, Montana last weekend. The, uh, in December, I did San Diego and Yosemite. So, getting out there. Been very fortunate to be able to travel quite a bit for real work, ghost work, all of the above very excited about that position but what i'm going to be even more excited about is this 12th round pick we have coming up because there's no round i love quite like a 12th round where we're looking at names like quentin johnson joshua palmer dontavian wicks who i do kind of like dontavian wicks who i was just probably going to grab um let's do some scrolling yeah See Baker get pulled up here. Uh, ah, what do we want to do? Let's grab Kendry Miller. Because that's fun. If Quentin Johnson was still there, I think I might have grabbed him. Let's grab, let's grab Braylon Allen for an RB here. Did the Chargers offensive quarter just have some comments about Quentin Johnston? Yeah, I saw that. He was essentially saying that he's expecting him to take a major step forward and, you know, all that stuff. Very heavily coach speak that Quentin Johnson, they're looking to be a second year breakout. But, and I'll take some shots because, you know, whatever. Penhurst, did they film Mr. Glass and Unbreakable around there? I'm not sure, to be honest. Uh, I went there last year. Penhurst Asylum is a very somber place. It's very cool. It's uh, an interesting, interesting historical area to go check out if you're if you are from the area or looking for something. And 
the convention we do there is a large convention. It's obviously paranormal related, but if it's something you're looking to do on the weekend, lots of big names from TV shows you've heard of are usually there. Lots of vendors. It's it's a good time. I wouldn't say to travel more than, you know, an hour and a half to two hours for the most, if you're really looking for something to do the weekend, but it's a, even not for the convention, just to be able to go walk around the grounds there and get into some of the buildings and see it. But the, the history of that place is very tragic. Very tragic. You can actually hear about it. We covered it last year. So if you're looking for the history of that particular building. It is on the hometown ghost stories feed, but very cool place to check out. What else, what else is tragic is Quentin Johnson's rookie year, as we were talking about. Uh, but yeah, lots of coach speak, which you're going to hear. I mean, it's the, we're expecting big things from this player this year, best shape of their life. All the, all the talking points. Coaches aren't going to come out and be like, yeah, he's shit, but he's on the team. That's a nice segue. That's what we do. I had a shit open, so I had to get at least a good segue in. All right, we are coming back up on the clock in a few picks. I know how I would like this to break. We're going to have to get extremely fortunate for it to happen. But we might get there. We might get what we want here. See Adam Thielen going in the 14th round. Musgrave goes. Yeah, I wanted Kate Otten. That was actually where I was looking to go here. I think what we're going to do instead... I'm starting to come around a bit on Khalil Herbert as a back. I, I really want to figure this out, how I want to play the Chicago backfield. I'm very flip-floppy on it with this, De with this DeAndre Swift signing. I've been flipping back and forth how I want to play these guys. And right now, I want to grab some Herbert. So that's what we're going to do here. See, likely go. I also wonder if I want to do some. I was thinking about that too, where we already have Mark Andrews because I think likely has some standalone value for sure this year. I was debating on grabbing a double stack there. And I think I'm going to grab Will Levis to be our second QB here in the 15th round to go with D Hop. So that's how I want to play that. And if we didn't get Levis, I wouldn't have cried. I've been grabbing some Michael Penix Jr. very late. So. Don't hate the way this team's shaping up. I probably have more Lamar as my quarterback this year than anyone at the moment. Just he tends to fit right into what I'm doing on every single build. With the exception of that three quarterback build team. But yeah, I am uh, very excited about the drafts this year because I just think there's such a shakeup in positional ADP. Happy birthday. Uh, happy birthday. Happy Easter to you as well, BB Me Gazer and to Boofy. Good morning. Good morning. As we draft, we're in the 15th round right now, getting ready to round out the bottom quarter of this team having a good Easter Sunday morning show excited to go pack once again after this do some cleaning do some family meal situations hang with the dog hang with the rabbit and just feel good about about it being a Sunday that might not rain in New England the amount of rain we've gotten here 
it's crazy. I've never seen so much water still on the ground in this area. It's actually a bit concerning. I can't even bring my dog on our normal Sunday morning walk right now because the pond has flooded the paths and stuff. So it needs to stop raining in New England. But alas, it has not. I think we're getting more this week. So just checking the, the weather now to see. Yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, more rain in New England. Woof. Matt's glad to see the sun after six months up here. Are you in Alaska? Alaska is a place that I need to get to, if that's the case. Well, not if that's the case, just some place that I want to get to in general. Um, they have some really cool looking places. Oh, the North Shore. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's yesterday was nice. I can already gandering out my window a little bit right now. I can see that it's cloudy again here on the South Shore. So, yeah, we need to uh, just need it to dry out a bit. I don't even hate the overcast days. Just need it to just need to let things dry a bit. JJ McCarthy going in the 16th round to Mr. John Daigle. Be back on the clock here in a second. We currently have a 2661 build going. Uh, Malachi Corley goes. That's sad. That's who I wanted. Um, for this team, let's go with Rashad Bateman. I think Rashad Bateman makes sense for this team, obviously, with Lamar. And I think... The other thing that makes a ton of sense is to hold back our vomit and grab Chig as our second tight end for a guy that is just going to underperform again. But at least we have Mark Andrews on the team. And we'll just grab Chig since we're waited so late to get our second tight end to go with our quarterback. So... We got a Tennessee, Baltimore stacks situation going on here, which we're okay with. With a 2672 build with Lamar and Levis as our QBs, Ramondre, Javante Williams, Chase Brown, Kendra Miller, Braylon Allen, Khalil Herbert as our RBs, Jamar Chase, DJ Moore, Malik Neighbors, D Hop, Xavier Worthy, Troy Franklin, Rashad Bateman at wide receiver mark andrews and chig at tight end and not only do we have stacks with quarterbacks but we also were able to stack up some cincinnati players with jamar chase and chase brown so just jamar chase brown is that what we want to call that stark that stack to make things easier going forward and we also got khalil herbert with dj moore so get some bears get some bears some Bengals, some ravens oh my that would be from the very much worse Wizard of Oz remake. Stefan is saying that Kenneth Gainwell should have an ADP of like 180, not 210. Doesn't make much sense to him. I agree. I've been grabbing Kenneth Gainwell. I haven't been pulling him up too much, but I have been grabbing some Gainwell. I I know that they the Eagles clearly they they brought in Barkley, so they're trying to upgrade a bit at that position, but they still like Gainwell from all indications. Maybe a little bit of standalone value, but definitely one of those quote-unquote handcuffs that we were talking about before that I do like grabbing, especially when it's so late. So, I don't make it a point. He's not going to be like a 40% guy for me this year like he was last year, but I do, uh, I do like Kenneth Gainwell this year. 
All right, let's bring the music back down a little bit as we start to wrap up. And let's get back to the board here. Daigle grabbing J.K. Dobbins in the 17th round. Be interesting to see if he does. I don't, I know he was flirting with signing with the Chargers and it seemed like that was going to happen. I didn't see if that got made official yet. I don't think so. Uh, Boofy is saying guys like Gano are prime week 17 type players too that have a chance of mattering. Absolutely. You can see that. You can see them potentially having a spot locked up. But we get a lot more of that in the late the late rounds right now because of the value on some of the look, I don't like the rookie running backs this year too much at all. But you get more of that in this tournament. Some of that gets priced in after the draft and when we're doing the bigger tournaments. So I agree. And if he stays at this point in the coming drafts, then yes. All right, so we're at 2672 right now. I don't think we need quarterbacks. I don't think we need tight ends. I think I want more Abanacanda too. I, and I think that's sort of along the kind of Gainwell lines as well. But I know I've been trying to get more, more Izzy. So we're going to do that. And I did that just because there are some wide receivers that I'd be fine with taking here. And we're just going to take Malik Washington. Although I do kind of like Hyatt, and I haven't been grabbing enough of him. I'm going to grab Jalen Hyatt as my eighth wide receiver. And just hope that he continues some of those deep routes that he was doing last year. Which I'm sure he will. So, we got one pick left in this draft. Just kind of scrolling through to see if there's any teams that are overly interesting to talk about. I don't understand going Josh Allen, Joe Burrow as your two QBs and then still grabbing Drake May. I just, uh, I don't think I'd be in on that. I think this is a really good three QB team here where the guy who took Dak, Baker Mayfield, and Geno Smith. He has CD, Jake Ferguson to go with the stack. Also has Evans and Rashad White to go. Oh, and Godwin got super Tampa stack there. And who else do they have? Gino, Seattle. Mm. I don't know if I would have won Gino here. I think he could do two with these guys. I actually think he can do two quarterbacks with Dak and Baker, but I don't hate the Gino. I, I don't know if I would have grabbed Trey Palmer with that team, though. Well, we already have all of them. Where did Zeke's been getting drafted? He's been, so he went in the 17th round here. Um, he's been getting drafted around the 17th round lately, especially with the the boiling hot takes that he might go to Dallas. I see people thinking that he's going to start the year as the Dallas starter, and they're still going to draft somebody like a Jonathan Brooks and you know let Brooks kind of take his time getting into the lineup. That's a theory. We'll see if it happens. 
there's 31 other teams that could say something about that. So I, I see people, I don't have any problem with drafting Zeke this late. I do think it's the reverse of the Kenneth Gainwell thing though, that Zeke is more of a guy that might start out the year and give you nothing towards the end in the playoffs. So I think you need to be very specific about God, I have the hiccups about the way that you draft a guy like Ezekiel Elliott. And we've had these discussions where like, I don't know if it's the right mentality to always be going into it with that. But if you're, if you're shooting for rookie upside on heavily on your running back portion of your team, then Zeke late makes sense. But just be very careful about how you're drafting players like that. All right, we got one pick left on a 2782 build. See, people are finally letting Tyler Boyd, Boyd fall off the end of the world in the draft uh, space. Let's see, Penix Jr. go. Penix is like one of the easiest quarterbacks for me to click on right now. He's just going to rise. I just don't see any situation that he goes to where he's not rising up to like a 15th round pick in the next few months. And we are back on the clock here. I think what we're going to do is grab Ronnie Rivers. And call it a day. So our team is Lamar, Will Levis, Ramondre, Javante, Williams, Chase Brown, Kendry Miller, Braylon Allen, Khalil Herbert, Izzy Abanacanda, Ronnie Rivers. Wide receivers are Jamar Chase, DJ Moore. Malik Neighbors, DeAndre Hopkins, Xavier Worthy, Troy Franklin, Rashad Bateman, Jalen Hyatt, Mark Andrews, and Chig as our last player. So very fun draft. Enjoy doing it on this Easter Sunday. I hope everyone has a great day. Go out, get some of those NBA drafts in too. Let's do some of those playoff drafts today over the next week. Those are a lot of fun. That contest is not filling. That's not me shilling. That's just me looking to get maybe 10 entries in that and uh, sweat some NBA playoff action with everybody. So until next time, I will catch you later and peace. One. Woo! Those were some spicy takes. Want to stay up to date with all of the other spicy takes we're going to have over here at Spike Week? Why don't you press that subscribe button below? You turn notifications on, we draft a team, boom, you know about it. We have another spicy take, boom, you know about it. You can be there, you can draft with us. You wanna stay up to date, that's how you do it. All right, we'll catch you later next time here at Spike Week.